Hello, my friends, and welcome into our little cottage kitchen. It's Monday here on the farm. Mondays are a very busy day for us between homeschooling and farm chores. You can see outside, you can see that we got over two feet of snow in the last week, which means that we've been spending a lot of time getting water out and raking pathways for animals and shoveling snow off roofs. So needless to say, we're kind of in a tizzy going into this week. And so we're going to counter that energy with some real delicious, rustic, homemade energy in the form of a galette. I know I'm not saying that proper with a proper French accent, but that's what we call it here. That's how we pronounce it. And that's what we're gonna make together today. I want you to fall in love with this dessert because it's really rustic, it's really simple, and it's probably one of the most versatile recipes that you could possibly bring into your kitchen. So if you're not familiar with what a galette is, it's really just a very simple dough that then you can form around roasted vegetables, meats, jams, fruits, really anything. It can be sweet, it can be savory. Today I'm gonna to show you the basic, basic, basic galette recipe that I follow. And we're gonna be using some homemade peach preserves because as you can imagine, not a lot of fresh fruit coming out of the orchards or bushes right now, but we do have some summer goodness stored away in the root cellar in the form of this jam. So very versatile, whatever you have in your fridge right now, you can turn into a galette. So let's get started. All right, the first step to a good galette is to get a digital scale. I'm gonna keep barking up this tree until everyone who watches this channel has one. This is gonna vastly improve the consistency of your bakes. And even if you're making something like a galette dough, flour is way different depending on how long they've been in storage or if they're whole grain, or if they've been sitting for a while in your kitchen after being freshly ground, all of that affects how much a flour actually would measure out in terms of volume. So I'm gonna be using one cup of all-purpose flour, but really that's 120 grams. So I got my digital scale here, and for ease of baking all the time in my kitchen, I keep my all-purpose flour right here in this canister behind me, and I'm baking with einkorn flour today, which is a really beautiful heirloom wheat. Now you can make a galette dough with all-purpose flour, if that's what you have on hand, but I prefer it with half all-purpose, and half whole grain, because I like the way that that tastes the best. So I have some whole grain einkorn berries that I have ground down into fresh flour. You could use hard red wheat, hard white wheat, whatever you have. This is just a whole grain flour, wheat flour. Okay, now remember how I said a cup of all purpose was 120 grams? Well, a cup of a whole grain is 96 grams. So that's 20 grams of difference. That's pretty significant kind of shows you why it's worth weighing. So I have one cup of all-purpose, one cup of whole grain. 120 grams for all-purpose, 96 for whole grain. And don't worry, I'll put the recipe below the video if you want an easy way to remember the numbers. Now to this dough, I'm going to add about two tablespoons of sugar because this is gonna be a sweet galette. So you can see my sugar looks quite a bit different than a conventional white sugar. That's because I'm using a whole sugar cane. So sugar cane, we're all familiar with. That's what we get sugar from. But typically, when it's pressed and it releases its liquid, this is what comes out, actually. It's rich, it's sugar with the molasses still intact. Now, to get white sugar, you separate that molasses, so that's considered a byproduct, and then you bleach the sugar, and that's how you get white sugar. This is the whole sugar cane juice just dehydrated. Well, that was a hard word for me to find right there. It's just dehydrated whole cane sugar. And I like this because it has a lot of minerals intact. It's not as sweet as white sugar and it has a lot of flavor. So we're just gonna mix these up together. Add a good pinch of salt. If you're new to baking, you should know a very simple principle, which is that salt actually enhances sugar. So they play off of each other. So really you'll be hard pressed to find any baking recipe that doesn't have some amount of salt in it. Okay, it's very simple so far, right? Well, we only have one more ingredient to add 
and that's eight tablespoons of a good butter. Eight tablespoons is about 96 grams, about 100 grams. I know that this is a 16 tablespoon butter here, so I'm just roughly cutting it in half. Our cow Cece is just about ready to have a calf. Well, in the next month or so. And I cannot wait, because like I shared with you in last week's video, this year it's gonna be all about butter production. So I'm quite eager to start stocking up on our own. Okay, now you can cut this into little uh, quarter inch squares and blend it in that way, but I find the easiest way to do this is just with a box cheese grater. And just grate the butter right over the top of the flour. So remember at this point, we have a cup of whole grain flour, a cup of all purpose flour, good pinch of sea salt, a couple tablespoons of a good sugar. That's it. It's worth noting that usually when I make this galette recipe, I actually double the dough because you can wrap it up in plastic wrap and put it in a baggie and just keep it in your refrigerator for a couple of days so that if you want to make a quick breakfast, you've got something right at the ready for it. This is always the tricky bit. Okay. I am making this galette actually for dessert tonight. We're having spaghetti for supper, which I have yet to even start. And as you can see, the sun is already starting to go down, but I suppose priorities first, dessert. What I'm doing now is just using my hands to sort of break that butter up just a little bit, blend it in with the flowers. Very easy. One bowl. All right. All that's left to do now is add some ice water. And this is important because our butter is going to help our dough flake. And if we add hot water, the butter will melt and we won't get that just really crispy, beautiful puffed galette that we want. So make sure that you use ice water for this. We're gonna use probably about a quarter cup of this ice water. As it goes, you can always add more, you can't take it away. So err on the side of doing a little bit less than you think. And we'll just use a fork to kind of bring it together. Now, if you can't be bothered to do this by hand, you can certainly do it in the food processor. I do that all the time. Just blitz your butter in and pour your ice water through the little hole at the top until it comes together. So we're sort of at a crumbly stage right now, which is just fine. I bet if I, yeah, see if I grab this and pinch it together, it'll hold together, which means we're good on water. So what I'm gonna do now is just kind of get in there and just squeeze it together with my hands. this out of the way here, put my back into it. <laughs> I'm not kneading it. I'm really just folding it over itself, pressing down with the palm of my hand, trying to get it to pick up all those little crumbs of flour so that it all comes together nicely. Just like so, and that's it, done. So let's transfer our galette dough now over to a piece of parchment paper. Let me move this out of the way. All right, so now that our galette dough is done, I'm just gonna flour that ever so slightly and I'm gonna use my hands to start shaping this a bit. This is really like a rustic pie. And once you kind of get used to making galettes, it's really hard to go back to making pies because they're not fussy at all. They don't, they're just so simple. And it basically tastes the exact same. <laughs> so I'm just kind of using my hands to create a circle. Just like so. I've got about an eight inch circle here so far. I'm just gonna take it out ever so slightly. You don't wanna get it too thin because this is a crust. You can see I'm not really worried about keeping my edges perfect. Did 
ta-da. How simple is that? Okay, these are some homemade peach preserves and they're delicious. I make mine with vanilla and with honey. It's really beautiful. And these actually come from our peach tree outside, right outside the kitchen door. So many of you already know, but my husband is from the state of Georgia. So I made him a little southern patch of land right out here, right outside our kitchen door with a rocking chair from Cracker Barrel and some nice old southern ferns and pots so that you have to pass them when you come inside and then a big old peach tree. <laughs> so you can sit there and pretend like you're somewhere down south. Now you can really use any combination of fruits or vegetables at this point. I love roasted beets and roasted onions. Absolutely delicious. You could use fresh blueberries, fresh raspberries. You could use apples, strawberries, really anything. The ratio is about two cups of fruit to each galette. This is a little bit less than that, which is fine because you the fruit will cook down, so you can kind of pile it in there. You can see I'm leaving just a little bit of an edge. Just like so. Actually, you know what? I think I want to do a little bit more jam. Could you get me another jar of jam? Okay, I'm gonna add, I think, just a few more spoonfuls of some rhubarb jelly. We're just gonna mix and match here and just use what we have in the root cellar and in the pantry to make this happen. So. Just a little bit of extra. Okay, I think that looks great. This is the fun part. So what we're gonna do now is fold our sides up to kind of create a crust on the outside that will help retain those juices. Now, if you're gonna use fresh fruit, you're gonna get a lot more juice flow. It's just the way that, goes, that it goes. You can kind of counter that by cooking your fruit a little bit on the stove top with a tablespoon of flour if you'd like, or tossing your fresh berries with a tablespoon of flour. That'll help the sauce that cooks out of them to thicken up a bit. But just know if you're gonna use fresh fruit, you're gonna have a little bit of berry bleed, as it's called. And that's okay. This is rustic. This is good. So jam usually doesn't have that problem. But what I'm going to do is just use my parchment paper. Can you see this? Okay. Can you see this? To fold up our sides to create a little bit of an edge. Just like so. Continue working around. Folding it in. So I can feel a little bit where this kind of cracked. I'm just gonna take a little bit of time to press that together with my fingers. And that's one of the reasons I like to do this with the parchment is you can kind of press on it. See, I'm putting some pressure right here to kind of pinch that into place. And that is actually perfect. So here's my other tip for a galette. Instead of baking it on a baking tray, where really everything can go all over the place, <laughs> I like to cook mine in a cast iron skillet because it has the edges, so it can kind of help the galette to retain its shape a little bit. And hold our parchment paper up, just like so, so that if anything does leak out, it doesn't come onto the pan and then cause kind of smoke and off flavor in our baked goods. So don't worry about the overhang. Just crunch it down. And that is perfect. So what we need to do now, so far this has been pretty easy, right? You guys are hanging in there. I'm gonna actually use an egg to wash the edges. There's a couple reasons that I'm gonna do this. The first is that it helps to seal little holes where the jam or the fruit juices might leak out. And the second is because it helps it to bake up nice and shiny and golden, and it looks really beautiful. Even though this is a very rustic dessert, we still want it to look beautiful to our eyes. It can look rustically beautiful, if that makes sense. It's also one of the reasons that I really love to serve galette with a scoop of something. So 
If I'm making a savory galette, let's say with roasted beets and mushrooms, serving it with like a little mustard sauce. If I'm making a sweet one, I love to serve it with sweetened ricotta or sweetened mascarpone or a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Just looks nice. Okay, got my egg here that's just been whipped up. I'm just gonna brush over the edges of pastry. One of the things I actually love about using a whole grain flour is you do get texture in your galette, especially if it's home ground flour. And I love that because it does really make it feel homemade. So I'm kind of using my brush to rub along the edges to help seal up any holes. And that doesn't necessarily mean that our galette is not going to leak, but it will help. So be generous and kind of go up underneath the edges a little bit. There we go. Well, let's also have kind of a way of taking on a mind of their own and sort of correcting themselves in the oven too. So don't fret about it too much, but I'm really happy with this. This is actually one of the only times in my entire work here in the kitchen that I use a white sugar. This is an organic white sugar and there's not a real whole sugar that gives you that like shiny crystal look on the outside. And again, even though if this is rustic, I'm just going to add a teeny bit of sugar on the edge of the pastry because it gives you that little bit of caramelized, crystally kind of shiny sweetness. And I really don't make my homemade jam super sweet at all. So it'll give it just a little bit more. Okay. That looks perfect. What we need to do now, and this is probably the hardest part, is stick it into the refrigerator for about 30 minutes while the oven preheats to 375 degrees. That's gonna firm everything up, help that dough hold together, help that butter harden, and what that means is that instead of completely melting when we put it into the oven, it will hold together for enough time that it will bake structurally sound. So it's really not a step to be missed. Granted, I have skipped it many, many times, but the galette will turn out much better if you do take the time for this step. So I'm gonna stick it in the fridge here, get started on the spaghetti we're gonna have for supper, and then we'll stick this in the oven right before we eat. Mm -hmm. 